Aquava, welcome to Expat Life Ghana. I'm Tony, this is my wife Ayo. We're documenting our move from Texas to Ghana as we go beyond the return. Okay, y'all, you may be thinking about sending some people here in Ghana a gift for the holidays. Aw, we've got one thing to say. Don't use FedEx. <laughs> and with that, let's get this video started. Don't use FedEx. No, that's a serious, serious statement, you guys. You might be planning right now on how to send yourself some goodies from the States. Maybe you decided to order an item or two on Amazon and you want a friend to ship it over for you. Right. Or you might be in the West and want to ship a friend a present, right? Avoid FedEx at all costs. Otherwise, it'll cost you. Yeah, the only thing they'll be sending you is a headache. <laughs> I tell you. That is a true story. Okay, so what's wrong with FedEx Ghana? Well, it starts in the States or wherever you're from as a global organization. Right. When it gets to Ghana, it turns into a private organization. Yeah, so we were out at FedEx not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, let's cut to some of the video that we took while we were waiting. How many hours? Anyway, let's just take a look at that video real quick. All right, so we are at FedEx right now um, where they are holding my package hostage. Yeah. It is 10.30. Mm -hmm. How long have we been here? Oh, wow. Just after 10. <laughs> so 30 minutes today. Yesterday we were here for hours trying to get this package. Still don't have it. We are just now at 10.30 seeing the customs guy. Come in. Come like to work. Two minutes ago. <laughs> um, what, what I've noticed about this place, um, different from going to the other places, is this is kind of set up in a way that um, you go to several different stations. With no and, rhyme or reason. There's like yeah, no order there's, to it. Yeah, you just go to stations, and at each station, just about, there's a fee for something. And we can't figure out what the fees are for, seeing that on the other end, all of the shipping was paid for already. Yes. Yeah. So I never noticed this before, but underneath the FedEx sign is an IAS Ghana Limited. We're totally going to have to check that out. Yeah, and all the um, delivery bikes that are coming out all have the IAS Ghana um, logo on it, and nothing, none of them say FedEx, so... Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have to it's, check into that one. Yeah, we can Google it while we're waiting. Yeah, while we do that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leo. Subscribe right now. We're sitting in the car, and all of these little delivery mopeds, motorcycles, are coming and going. They don't say FedEx on them. No, they had some different name. Yeah, and I so I started Googling. Right, the company that owns the FedEx here is not FedEx. Right, they use FedEx's name and affiliation but when the package gets here it's with a private company absolutely and, and <laughs> with private companies comes priority for profits we'll just say it that way this whole thing where you think you're sending something fedex and getting like the fedex feeling the fedex approval feeling of approval right, right? go global yeah you're getting the backing of a globally recognized company that guarantees some level of service. And when it gets to Ghana, they're like, oops, this yours? Oh, sorry, the you box ripped to get it off. Ghana treatment. Man, this was terrible. Mm -hmm. So we ordered a package. Um, I ordered something for the boys. Actually, it was, it was several packages that came from several different vendors. You totally busted me out on that. That's totally true. Okay, yeah. so I ordered a couple of different things and each of the vendors shipped a different way. One vendor shipped DHL. One vendor shipped FedEx. And the last vendor shipped USPS. So yeah. they shipped with the post, post office yeah. in the States, right? They just sent it as like a, a priority package, but right. they didn't send it with a shipping company. They just sent it by the mail. Which one came first, Tony? So, um... 
You're, you're my delivery package. Oh, yeah. Like the, upper. The, the phone call comes to me when we get delivery, so DHL came first. DHL totally came first, but yeah. it was only by like one day. Yeah, and the process for uh, picking up your package, very, very easy. Yes. So then FedEx came second. And that was less easy. Yeah, that was that was horrifying to go and <laughs> and know your package was paid for and shipped to you and all you're supposed to do is go and receive your package. Not how it works. That's how it worked for DHL. We live in Tema, we don't live in Accra. DHL, um, it was shipped by DHL to mm -hmm. Tema, to the Tema yeah, DHL Tema. closest to our house. Right. Very easy. Went to pick it up, in and out with my ID, no big deal, no extra money. Right. It was just go pick just up. Just pick up. Right. Um, FedEx came next. We're going to get around to how that turned out. But the last one to come was USPS. Yeah, which were, uh, it was only like by a day or so. Yeah, so it was not, only a couple days later. Right. And again, seamless process. You go, hey, I'm Tony, got a package. Yep. Here here's, here's my ID. Okay, sign here. Get out of here. Thank yeah. you. We even had a couple packages from private couriers. Yeah. That got delivered by you. That were delivered, and you know, you go out to, uh, and uh, meet them on their little moped and yep. whatever corner, and you go pick up your package. And it's again, nice. even that was seamless, and I don't know. Yeah. So it was easier to get from the post office right. than it was to get from FedEx here. So that's our cautionary tale from the front end. But let's talk a little bit more about why it was so difficult. Yeah. So right. let me let me interrupt you. Then. Oh, okay. So go ahead. So someone sent a package to you, <laughs> and they paid for, and you paid for that package to get here. Now yep. at neither of the other places, DHL or UPS did, or USPS, did we have to pay any other extra money for a package we already paid shipping for? Correct. And just for context, how much did we end up spend? Oh, do you know what? Let's save how much extra it cost until a little bit later in this video. First off, let's just start with um, the fact that when you get your call from FedEx, mm -hmm. you have to go to the Accra pickup location. You can't, they're not going to send it to like a satellite close to you. Right. You have to go to Accra. So that was already like... Problem number one. All right, so we drive into Accra. We mm -hmm. think it's going to be no big deal. We've left someone to watch the kids. We're going in. It's going to be maybe, you know. All right, a couple minutes, stops. Yeah, I was thinking, because we had just picked up at DHL, and DHL took me less than 10 minutes. So I thought, okay, we're going into FedEx. Take me 15 minutes, 20 tops. I budgeted for a half hour on our timetable. Right. <laughs> and we get there, and... The first problem was there's no parking. There's no parking. Yeah, and the street parking is so bad because uh, it's a busy area and you're, it's just no parking. Parking is the first problem. Yeah, for sure. The second part is, I think there's like a system of handoff here. I'm not really sure, but there's no clear process of lining up to get your, your, uh, your package. Right. As we approached the door to FedEx, the, to the building, we were approached by people who wanted to help, to help us. To help us. Through the process because they're like, oh, these guys don't know what they're about to get into. But they were doing it for everybody. We weren't the only ones. Oh, no, I'm saying, but that's... Yeah. It was like... There's we, people there to, as a job to make a profit who are right. like, hey, FedEx is crap, so let's help you figure all this out because you ain't going to do it by yourself. Yeah, you're going to get frustrated and... <laughs> You did get frustrated. Yeah, I was like, hey, whoa, well, we really need that, do we? Do you literally told me to send it back, and I was like, I don't know how that works here. I feel like <laughs> that would not end well. Yeah, so <sighs> this, this nice lady meets us and... Helps us to go through. So the first step in the process is finding a handler. But if you're not into the handling, you go up to a single window, one single graded window where you're supposed to get your stamped paper, a paper with your number, I uh, whatever. I don't even know why. I, I don't know why either, but there's about 20 people hoarded up against the window and one person on the other end giving out these papers one at a time and it takes a minute for them to get it, let me tell you. Yeah. How long were we sitting at that window? Oh. Was it almost an hour? Uh, yeah, it... 
It had yeah, to be it was it was close to an hour yeah. because um, I was my frustration level was reaching the boiling point. <laughs> Tony's frustration level is only twenty minutes, <laughs> so at an hour he was like, "Listen, you don't need whatever it is. Just send it back." And I was like, "Okay." So first, you get this stamped piece of paper. Sixty minutes on the clock for that. Mm -hmm. Then they take you around the corner to pay the fee, and I was like, "You give me that's the face you actually gave me." <laughs> Why are we paying for a fee when we pay for shipping already? I've already invested an hour. I'm not coming back. So I'm like, let's just go give them whatever the fee is. Okay, let's just go. <sighs> that hate. line was fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, they'll take your money quickly. The line to take the money was awfully quick. We were only in that line for like five or six minutes. Mm -hmm. That was pretty quick. But then? Yep. I thought that when you paid the money, then... They'll give you a package. That would be the package. And what we were told was that, no, now... No. You give the paper to the handler who goes into customs to retrieve the package. And I was like, well, don't they have FedEx workers to do that? I don't, I don't understand. It's not FedEx. So the handler is the one who will take your paper to go get the package. What does she let us know? Well, for her to do that, you got to pay customs, customs to move the package around for you and bring it out. And I'm like, wait, what did I just pay at the window? I thought uh, the window. So I looked at the receipt and it's like storage and handling fees. So almost a hundred Ghana and storage and handling fees. The package has been with them. A day. One, not even a whole. It, had yeah, it, came, it came in and we're like, okay, we're on the way to come get it. <laughs> so same day, the, the storage and handling fees. How much was the fee that the lady said for? Customs. She said somewhere in the range like three fifty to four or something like that initially. Yes, she said she could um, lower it for us because you know she could see that we were getting frustrated. That was her negotiation tactic, and I was like, uh huh, okay. And then of course a little something for her. So now we, <laughs> now we've paid for shipping, we've paid for our storage fees. Mm -hmm. Now we have to pay for our custom fees, which is blatant highway robbery yeah um i've had a package um that was an oversized package sent through usps through the united states postal service i paid 10 cds for <laughs> that to come through customs at the community one um post office hey community one post office we love channel. you guys doing a great job um, so when i heard 350 to 400 CDs for a package. I'm like, why? Now you may be wondering what's in this. Nothing that there's no electronics. Yeah, there's yes. no, it's just some toys for the kids. It's plastic. <laughs> the, yeah. the contents are plastic. Yeah. Um, so after after we realized that this is a, a scam, we decided that we really needed to tell other people so that no one else would FedEx. Right. But this whole customs business really bothered me mm -hmm. because when you sent to the post office, they do a customs check as well. Exactly. And again, I paid 10 CDs for the customs service at the post office. And the box was untampered with when you right. got there. They didn't open it until I got there. So we opened it together and, and there was no... We opened it to look what was in it. None of that. It was, here's your package. We have to open it. Okay, we see what's in it. Close it and here you go. So at the FedEx, when we got the box, it looked like it had been thrown from the back of a truck, mm. hit by another truck, picked yeah. up and put on the back of a different truck, and that pieces had fallen out along the way. I mean, yeah, very different process. The whole... I. When they handed it to me, it's obviously, I said it was Toys for the Boys, that has pieces. I was like, there's no way all the pieces are in this box. There's there's no way. The bottom is ripped open. The top is ripped open. The packages inside were all opened up haphazardly. Like, nobody mm -hmm. was trying to keep anything together. Yeah. So. <sighs> not happy with them. So. Just. <laughs> when we compare time. Yeah. Um. Don't ship FedEx. When we compare money. Don't ship FedEx. When we compare a process, like a systematic process of operation. Mm -hmm. Don't ship FedEx. <laughs> so I think, I think we've kind of come to a really good conclusion here. What is that conclusion? 
Don't ship FedEx. <laughs> Drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Okay, so before we sign off, what should you do if you want to ship to the States? Or sh ship, ship from the States to Ghana? Or wherever you're from, mm -hmm. don't use FedEx. You can use... DHL, yes. your local postal service. Absolutely. Um, I don't know how Brown does here. Um, United Parcel, Parcel Service. But um, I, um, I would just say go with DHL. Yeah. DHL, your local uh, postal service works great. And I do have to say that the experience of, of working with them so far, mm -hmm. no issue. That, that was right. the such that was the night and day difference. Mm -hmm. it was just like a complete hassle, headache, harassment almost felt like yeah. taking being taken advantage of in a formal process versus hey, welcome. Here's yeah. your package for you. Have a great day. Yeah, when when she said the price for it to come out of customs, the price range, I'm like, wow, that that doesn't sound right. And then that there's no set price for packages of size or anything like that. It's just whatever people feel they can get from you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, do you know how long about, well, I'll tell people, you know how long it took to get from the lady to the customs to the car? It's another two hours. It, it, oh wait, hold on. But we were there for two days. Yeah, we didn't, oh yeah, because we didn't even get it done the first day. We had to come back a second day, yeah. a second trip to Accra. Yeah, they recognize, oh, y'all not. Come back tomorrow, I'll, I'll, first thing in the morning, and, and I can work on it for you. Uh, they aren't even there first thing in the morning. That was some, anyway. First thing in the morning means like 11.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing has just been horrible. Save yourself the headache, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, and as a... You wanted to tell FedEx Global some very important, uh, give them a tip. Here's a tip from Tony to FedEx Global. Um, know who your affiliates are and how they represent your name. And pull your affiliation with the Ghana, <laughs> whatever company it is. Uh, yeah. It, they're not doing you any good. No, no. Whew. None at all. So we did while we were sitting in the car waiting. This is our last little moment here have a chance to look at some of the reviews <clears throat> uh, for for FedEx online. <laughs> they had me rolling, you guys. So rolling. when I say don't use FedEx, uh, that's me being nice, and that's the nicest thing that <laughs> of their reviews anybody has said. If you want to read more, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite, Funny. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for listening to our rant. Charlie out for now. And don't shit FedEx. <laughs> <laughs>